This is the DMT One to One Show, episode 44, on the 22nd of January 2014, a feature on the UK's unsigned guide. Hello everyone and welcome to the DMT One to One Show, the show where we chat about the most interesting projects and startup in digi- startups in digital music. This week it's a real pleasure to welcome uh, to the show Louise Dogson, uh, editor of the Unsigned Guide. So the Unsigned Guide has been providing guidance and contact info to early stage musicians in the UK since 2003. So it's a real pleasure Louise to have you on. How, how, how's it going? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Great. It's uh, it's a good uh, Monday morning. And so, uh, you know, yeah. I want to take it from the top and uh, uh, tell me uh, all about the Unsigned Guide from the beginning. You know, how did the project get started back in two- 2003 and, uh, you know, how do you start out? Okay. Uh, well, the idea originally came from the two directors of the company. And um, we are really small, independent companies. So There's kind of only really four members of the team two of which are the main directors that set it up. Yeah. Um, and they used to run rehearsal rooms in Manchester, um, obviously quite a while back now, and just got inundated with requests from bands that would come in and see them regularly, um, asking for promoters in other cities that they might have contacts for, or just anyone that could help them out um, beyond Manchester, basically, and just trying to stretch a bit further afield. So they started compiling an A4 sheet of paper basically with people's names and numbers on and just used to photocopy um, copies of that and hand them out to people as and when they asked um, and then they just sort of realised there was probably a bit of a gap in the market for people easily being able to find this information. Yeah. Um, obviously it was pre, not quite pre the internet but before it really sort of took off and um, this this sort of information wasn't really readily available. It was just, you know, asking about, and it all seemed very, I guess, behind closed doors, really, um, for a lot of bands and artists. So they went to the Musicians' Union, just to have a chat with them and see if anything similar was in existence, maybe, that they didn't realise existed. Um, And they said, "Uh, no, there's nothing of that around sort of thing. So, you know, you should definitely go for it. Um, I think they did get funding for the first ever edition, um, but beyond that, it's just been independently funded, and basically, the um, books that we've sold or subscriptions just go back into funding, making more and keeping it up to date. Sure. Um, so that's how the idea was born, basically, um, and I sort of came on board after the first edition had been published. Yeah in 2003 so I've kind of been there mostly from the start but um, yeah it was just a case of researching all these different areas of the music industry that bands and artists need to know about and just making a really useful handbook that they could just carry around in their guitar bags or whatever um, and refer to at any point they needed to so it, it covered everything from and still does obviously from record labels, um, venues, promoters, festivals, that kind of thing. But then right down to vehicle hire, equipment hire. So if you were in a city and you got stuck and you needed to look something up, you had it to hand. So that's how the the idea initially came about. The first edition was published just for the Northwest region. That's where we're based. Um, So just kind of kept it uh, to what we knew. And then it really took off and was obviously very popular. So we spread it out and made it nationwide. I can't actually remember if I got the first or second edition of the Unsigned Guide. I remember because I was studying in uni at Salford University in, in Manchester. Oh, right. So uh, I think the one I got was actually the Northwest edition. So it may have actually been the first one because uh, at the time I was well, in my second year or third year uni. So uh, yeah, it was probably yeah. the, f- the very first one that we actually got and we got the f- some of the first shows booked uh, uh, through. So uh, definitely uh, a brand that I've been uh, well aware of for, for a long time. Oh, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, the Unsigned Guide has seen a constant evolution, of course. And, uh, uh, yeah. you know, back from, uh, you know, I was talking about uh, my own experiences uh, transcribing data from the guide into a spreadsheet to be able to organize sort of the band uh, contacting yeah. <laughs> different people and giving tasks to people to, what they needed to do uh, to to move things forward and uh, things of course have, have changed a lot and now the guide is entirely based online so yeah. uh, can you tell us a little bit about that transition and how it happened and was it painful for you guys? Um, it wasn't too painful it was it involved a lot of work um, <laughs> a lot of um, banging heads together and just kind of trying to work out how it would best 
um, evolve into an online version. But um, it just became really that, obviously, people were using laptops and portable things and mobiles, smartphones a lot more, and didn't necessarily want to carry around a big heavy book with them anymore. Yeah. Um, plus, there was costs related to that of you know posting it out to people and things like that, which all brought the price of the guide up. And we kind of wanted to make sure it was um, flexible. We understand that bands, you know, now we have subscription options which are monthly, quarterly, yeah. and annual being online. So if people choose a monthly option, they can sort of have a bit more need it, stop and join again in a few months' time when they may be some information. So, you know, probably not always hammering your directory for um, everything all the time, but at certain times of the year when you're running campaigns or you've got releases, you might need it more than others. So I guess it made it a bit more flexible, which was also part of the decision-making process. Sure, of course. Um, and obviously we could make it cheaper because these costs weren't... Um, attached to it anymore that we'd had with printing a book and sending it out to people. Yeah. Um, so it just made it a lot more accessible, really, yeah. for bands and artists, which is what we want, ultimately. Sure. Um, but, yeah, at the time we moved it online, we also put a lot of thought into new areas that the unsigned guide should cover. And, obviously, there'd been a huge revolution, really, in just the way that things were done online and digitally. Yeah. Um, and all the services that are now available. Um, so we want to make sure that we fully incorporated, you know, everything out there. So it's it's a guide, not just for people that are wanting to try and get a record deal, which obviously there's always an element of people out there that aspire to do that, but um, that it's really a DIY guide if people want to just do it independently and make a living in the best way they can. Yeah, sure. And uh, looking at also the, the way in which... Uh, uh, you know, online allows you to operate. You, you also, of course, have a much better idea now of uh, what areas of, of the guide are the most visited, for example, and what people want to know more about, right? And so, yeah. you know, have you seen any, uh, have you had any particular surprises or is there any particular area that is still the most visited on the unsigned guide at the moment? Uh, of course, you know, 10 years ago, it, everybody wanted the record deal. Is that still the case today or have people look, started looking more into DIY services? Yeah, um, it is still the case to a certain extent, quite surprisingly. Um, it's one of the most popular sections of the guide. But we did have seen more of a shift into maybe the music publishing and sync kind of thing, where I think people are more aware of um, getting their music on games, adverts, film yeah. and things like that, and the opportunities that can come from that. Um, so, yeah, I think we've kind of got... Um, several areas that are really popular within the guide and obviously all the live stuff like festivals have really taken off um of and there's lots of opportunities out there for emerging artists so um the whole live sector is usually pretty popular with venues and promoters yeah um i'd say some of the areas that maybe don't get used quite as much as i thought they would do is sort of regional press and yeah um blogs and things like that i think um a lot of bands and artists still sometimes think they can go directly to music contacts, A and R people, um, managers, and things like that um, directly, which obviously they can. But I think if you're kind of starting to create a bit of a buzz for yourself and you know getting yourselves written about, there's a lot of things that you can do without a PR company, without a manager, yeah. um, to start creating a bit of hype around you and get people writing about you, blogging about you, sharing things about you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, definitely. I think that's an area that's still a little bit undervisited sometimes. Yeah, sure. And, and uh, uh, I mean, one of the things I found, there's still quite a lot of bands out there that record records, like entire records, without having really a plan uh, on what to do with them after yeah. they finish. Is that something you find as well? And, and in that sense, do you find that there, there is an increasing amount of uh, bands that behave as businesses and try and, try and you know, uh, organize things a little bit more thoroughly on the front? Um, I'd say, yeah, we, it's probably slightly um, swaying towards people that don't have a plan, to be honest. From, but I don't know if that's mainly because we would get inquiries when people aren't really sure yeah. what direction to take things. Um, and obviously the people that have a really good plan and got it all together Maybe we don't hear from them as much because they're just getting on with it and they know what they're doing. But yeah. um, but we have run some 
we did run a survey last year, um, how much does it cost to be an independent musician and got some feedback from people there. And there were obviously a lot of people out there that really do have a plan um, and they are very conscious of making a living and, and their costs and yeah. um, their outgoings. And if they are spending things on getting recordings done, they're, they're making the most of it and getting their worth out of promoting that to the maximum when it is ready. Yeah, sure, of course. And looking at uh, also the way uh, in which the guide becomes essentially a, a health indicator for the industry too in the UK because you know of course uh, as the companies yeah. come and go it's also a good way to keep in track of who's still in business who's going out of business and you know one of the areas that comes to mind when thinking about that is for example recording studios you know uh, you yeah. know when you first started you would have had a much thicker uh, section on recording studios than you have today because many have closed over the last 10 years yeah uh, so is there uh, is there any other area that you feel like has either expanded or sh shrunk over the, over the last few years yeah, it's quite interesting seeing it from a kind of overview of just getting in touch with these companies. Um, and yeah, we have seen a reduction in recording studios, in mastering duplication um, places. Um, obviously, a lot in record shops, that's really dwindled down. Yeah. Um, obviously, independently and from the, the high street chains and things. Um, instrument shops as well. Um, yeah, a lot of these kind of, yeah, retail kind of service providers are um, dwindling areas that we find every year, year on year, just um, this, those sections are becoming less and less. Um, I'd say we've definitely seen a big increase in festivals, Yeah. Um, although that kind of fluctuates, it seems that people <laughs> seem to think, yeah, I'm going to put on a festival and then the next year perhaps it doesn't work out for them yeah. um, and they do come and go. But we just have seen generally um, quite a big influx in that area. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, no, that's, that's, that's fascinating. It's fascinating. And uh, uh, obviously like, uh, you, you were talking about musical instruments as well. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult yeah. because now with all the mass produced uh, sort of controllers and stuff, it, it's always so easy to find yeah. a better deal online than you find in a, in a, in a brick and mortar shop. So yeah, I, I definitely yeah. can uh, understand how they have started to uh, to shrink as well. Uh, I know that there was a chain in the UK as well that had uh, some big problems in of cash flow as well um, uh, quite recently. And uh, talking about uh, you know the idea of the impact of the guide as well. Of course, uh, with the paper edition, it was kind of hard for you guys to gauge what the impact of the guide was. And uh, you know, aside mm -hmm. from the name of the person that was buying the guide, uh, you may had not have had that much detail on you know yeah what the band was or, or what they were trying to do what, what kind of genre they were in uh, unless they they decide to tell you more about themselves uh, yeah. so uh, do you have an opportunity here to do, do you track the artists that the, the accounts are linked to in, in terms of understanding what they're growing what's happening if you see any any big success stories coming out of it uh, or, or, over the years um we do try and um kind of keep an eye on on people yeah. not in a, a big kind of no, way or seeing what way, they're yeah. kicking on <laughs> <laughs> but um people that do sign up you know we kind of and have a bit of interaction with and stuff we try and um yeah keep in touch with members that are doing well and get feedback from people a lot more yeah um now it's an online service um the difficulty with making a book was once it was printed, there's not a great deal you can do because it's made exactly. and it's out there and you can take on board feed for the next edition, but that can be, you know, a year or more before yeah. you're able to kind of put that into effect. Whereas we can try and change things um, and evolve a lot more um, organically from our users' feedback and things like that um, when we have, you know, this online service. So... We do try and sort of keep in touch with people a bit more and, um, yeah, listen to what they That's have got so. to say. You know, obviously we do have tracking systems, not where each individual has clicked, but, you know, we can see trends in where sure. page, page um, heat stuff, mapping yeah. and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's quite interesting to see you know, which functions are working better than others and where yeah. we can make improvements. Yeah. And you also have uh, some interesting services for... Uh, uh, 
artists yeah. and bands that sign yeah. up for the full year plan as well. Uh, so you, of course you, you said you have a monthly and quarterly plan. So for bands that want to just to try out the service, for example, or or check it out for a few weeks and see if it, that's for them. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the yearly plan, of course, that's essentially uh, what the old uh, old model of buying the book is in terms of uh, in terms of cost. Uh, it's a lot yeah. lower than uh, paying month by month. Uh, and you offer uh, yeah. some extra services like the, for example, there's a DIY doctor function uh, on there that uh, allows artists to get some uh, some feedback and guidance. So how, yeah. how did you set that up and how, how does that work? Um, well, basically we just had the, just the general feedback and the kind of communication that we have from bands and artists is just that we think that people just really want to feel like somebody's listening to them, having yeah. the time to listen to their music. They maybe don't care if it's, you know, the head honcho at Sony. They just want somebody to have listened and get some feedback. Yeah. Um, and we just thought that was something that we could offer for our members if they do want to send a track in, um, that we can kind of listen and provide, you know, some constructive criticism necessary, but just some general feedback and some ideas of how they could, you know, take it to market or maybe what um, the next step for them would be yeah. following that song um, that we send over. Um so yeah, that's actually been quite a good success. And we also have a spotlight feature now, which is a, a monthly blog that we do um, where we select five of the best tracks, but it's all from our members as well. And we've had some people that are, you know, Blesser and Shy Nature, um, quite a lot that are going on to really decent things and being played a lot on Six Music and Radio One and stuff like that. That's great. Um, so yeah, it's really nice to for people to see that the members that use the guide um, can really use it to their advantage and, um, you know, get their music out there pretty much without yeah. the help of, you know, top dogs in the music industry yeah. necessarily having a manager. You can just get stuck in and really do a lot for yourself these yeah. days. Yeah, absolutely. Look, looking at uh, as well, you know, the UK is a very... Uh, fertile ground for music but it's also uh, somewhere where bands aspire to go to, to go from other yeah. countries so have you, have you seen also a, an uptake in international subscriptions for from artists that may want to uh, gig tour or play at festivals in the uk and want to get uh, that yeah. kind of info yeah we do um get a certain percentage of um international signups um all year round really it has um since we became online obviously that's increased a lot because it's a lot more accessible yeah people didn't really want to pay the postage and things like that to get a massive book sent to America, for example, which is absolutely fair enough. So it has opened up that a lot more for um, musicians in other countries, which is great. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I do think a lot of people do aspire to kind of get into the UK market. Um, and we have a lot of sign-ups from, we've had a little influx from Australia. Yeah recently um we've always got a um quite a steady sign up from america and places like that but yeah european places as well of course um it's quite yeah. easy to reach yeah that's cool. definitely that's very cool and uh, looking at uh, uh, the way um in which artists also uh you know look at their career path uh, do you feel like you know the unsigned guide can you know uh, where wh when do artists uh, decide that they are going to make a living out of it and uh, or they're going to look at music as a hobby? You know, there's a big debate right now going on uh, around uh, uh, revenues and around, for example, streaming revenues mm -hmm. and, and what's happening around that. Uh, are you, are you, uh, do you get some feedback from artists around, you know, their concerns uh, over, you know, how their career is going to shape up in the, in, in the coming years and, and, and uh, you know, how seriously they're going to take their career in music if they really want to be able to make a living out of it? Um. Yeah, we do hear back from some some musicians that, you know, want to obviously advise on the next steps to take. Um, and especially when we did our survey, what's the cost of being a musician, yeah. um, we did get a lot of feedback in relation to um, streaming and uh, a lot of it to do with actually live gigs on the circuit and things like that and yeah. people not getting paid for gigs and obviously the expenditure that um, the outgoings that they have for getting to a gig and obviously putting on their own events and things like that and yeah. their concerns about breaking even and making 
money back. Um, yeah. I do think, yeah, a lot of bands do struggle with that. Um, and it is a very difficult thing um, at what point it does cross over from being a hobby to, you know, taking it more seriously. Um, of course. And of course, you have a big base as well in Manchester of, uh, you know, I was talking about Salford University and the, I think Manchester Uni also has a music course now. And, you know, there's there's a big base yeah, of students like, as well that, that you know, plan to take music seriously. Uh, but whether yeah. that happens or not afterwards, that's, uh, that's a whole other. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very competitive out there. But I think, yes. you know, if uh, if you, you know, really want to get stuck in and just give it your best shot um, and learn as much as you can about the industry and how it works. Um, we do have areas in the Unsigned Guide um, with informative articles and blogs from experts in the music industry and organisations such as AIM yeah. um, and BPI and things like that, um, hopefully shedding a bit of light on on how it does all fit together. It's really important to be clued up on that, yeah. I think, to give yourself the best chance yeah. Um, and, yeah, to know to know what you're up against and know how you fit into the whole scheme of things and yeah absolutely for your and, own benefit and finally you know i want to talk about the the latest uh, free guide that you released for music uh, to music funding uh, so music funding is an area yeah. that is uh, is becoming increasingly important you know we're talking about uh, being able to take your music to the next level without losing a boatload of money you know of course there's always going to be an investment from the band's part but if there's a ways to offset that investment or, or uh, yeah. provide support then that's great and uh, you know I was talking also about the, the guide that uh, uh, Music Tank released uh, a few months ago which is a really in-depth yeah. guide on funding so have you have you approached uh, the funding aspect of it and, and what does the guide uh, comprise? Okay well we um, basically just got in touch with all the organisations that um, that we know of that are offering music related funding yeah. um, and arts funding um, so we asked them to put together information, all of these individual bodies, and we've just gathered it all together in this big guide. So it's literally all presented in front of you, all the opportunities that are out there, how you can go about applying for them or get in touch with the the people that can you know, help you further with that. Yeah. Um, so we have information from the Arts Council, uh, PRS for Music Foundation, uh, Music Tank as well, and they very kindly offered a discount on their guide <laughs> within our guide um, awesome. uh, it also covers crowdfunding and things like that as well you know fan funding um, what else have we got in there um, transmit startups that's kind of a way to get your own creative loans if you are setting up your own creative business right. um, they're government funded um, loans so so yeah, just trying to cover all the different aspects of finance that are out there. There's obviously Musicians Benevolent Fund as well, yeah. um, the Music Export Growth Scheme, um, Momentum Music Fund from PRS Music Foundation. So we've just tried to get all this information together in one place. I think um, a lot of musicians and bands are largely unaware of what is out there yeah. um, and what they could take advantage of and maybe tailor their projects to fit around or to fit into the remit of pitching for some funding. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just to kind of let people know that there is funding and finance out there, despite I know a lot of cutbacks have been made and things, but hopefully different um, streams of revenue are sort of coming around those cuts now yeah. um, and forging their way. Um, oh, sorry. So, yeah. And it's also a case of bands realizing that, you know, there's there's a lot of, you know, naysayers talking about how there's a sea of music out there and you're never going to get noticed and it's very difficult, yeah. uh, which is true, you know, but uh, but it's also ve it's very easy to release a record on Spotify or on iTunes, but it's actu actually not that many bands that take that to uh, really the next level, to playing a lot of live gigs, to promoting their release, to making sure that people mm -hmm. know know their name and know about them. So when you, when you go to that next level, it's actually the, the, the number of bands that are around reduces significantly uh, from those that are actually just recording something and releasing it on Spotify. Yeah. Uh, and so in that sense, it's actually not as, you know, it's very difficult to get these types of funding, but it's definitely worth a shot if you are in that position that you have cultivated, a, a, you know, a small a dedicated fan base and you have yeah, had some press absolutely. and you have some, some momentum, essentially. It's definitely worth looking into.
Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, there's stuff out there so you can go abroad to South by Southwest and, you know, get help with things like that. So I think if you really are dedicated and wanting to put the the work in, um, investigating these options is a really good idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, it's, it was a real pleasure talking to you. And uh, of course, yes, it's uh, theunsideguide.com. Uh, uh, and for our yeah. international listeners, uh, once again, it's a, a really great resource for uh, uh, getting some contacts in the UK music industry if you are in the UK or if you're looking to uh, work uh, within the UK or, or, you know, have some contacts in the music industry here. Definitely worth uh, having a look at. And I think the plans for the month a month start at uh, £5 a month, which is uh, super reasonable. Uh, and uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, go and check that out uh, thanks so much Louise for your time thank you very much for and thanks me. so much for listening to the DMT one to one show it comes out every week and if you enjoy this show you might also enjoy the news show that comes out every week uh, between Thursday and Friday where we talk about the latest news in the music tech industry thanks so much for listening have a great week and till next time and that's all for this week. I really hope you enjoyed the show. Check out digitalmusictrends.com and sign up to the weekly newsletter. 